Basic Bible, great for homeschool, Sunday school curriculum, family devotionals, and a ton of other things. And I hope that you're enjoying it as we continue our study through the book of Genesis. We're actually going to hit the midway point today. This is going to be our middle chapter, if you will. We're into chapter 25. Here we go. <clears throat> Segment one, as you know, we do the doodle. And I took just a moment before we went live to actually clean off my dude later because I didn't do it last time. And I thought this time, you know, hey, go ahead and get it done. So I did it. <laughs> got my doodle tater and I got my doodle looter and we're ready to go. We're going to doodle. See the doodle? See the, okay, let's doodle. All right, here's Abraham talking to Sarah and uh, they're saying, hey, let's talk about generally Genesis. And so that's what we're going to do. Here's the review, guys, and we got a lot of stuff happening here. Watch this. You're going to miss a lot of stuff on the screen. All right. Yeah, we're going to see in Chapter 17, we're going to have the Covenant of Circumcision. Chapter 18, the Three Visitors. 19, we're going to have Sodom destroyed. On and on you go. with You can, you can review these. But remember, 21, 22, 23, and 24 are all about Isaac. That's why you've got the two that's ha-ha made up of ha-ha-ha, because Isaac means laughter, okay? <clears throat> so we did all four of those at one time. Now we're into chapter 25. And 25 is relatively interesting, okay? Because it's, it's transitional, etc. But it's a pretty big chapter because in chapter 25, Abraham is going to die, okay? And so here I've got the blown up version of it. And here you got this blown up version of that. So you can kind of see this is supposed to be Jacob and Esau. They're two different kind of guys. Abraham is going to die. Jacob and Esau are going to be born. So if you're going to do... 25, you draw the two on its side. Now that's that's quite a two, isn't it? But we're going to go with it, okay? You got a two, put a cap on there, and the blank spot over here is supposed to look like Abraham, all right? I'm not going to do that very well, but you can see, okay? that. And then the five, whoop, the five is actually, this is the world, and got an arrow there, but what we're ha having in the five is we're going to have these two guys, all right? And these two guys are going to be quite significant. This is Jacob and Esau. And they're going to present to us a real contrast in the way you go about life, etc., etc. But today you're going to see that one of these guys is really going to give up a big advantage that he had for just a bowl of soup. <laughs> All right, that's chapter 25. So 25, if you can remember, put the two on its side. This little space here is that's Abraham, and he's going up to be a god. Chapter 5, then, is you got, uh, you've got you uh, got Jacob and Esau, and they're going to go into the world because they're going to be born. All right? Notice that Jacob is carrying, he got him a little bowl of soup there, got the little hat on. I thought Gabriel did that really well uh, with regards to trying to remember these guys. You'll understand that more as we continue on. All right? So there you go. Chapter 25, Abraham dies, Jacob and Esau are born. Got it? Boom. All right. So if I was going to test you over segment number one, <coughs> I would, of course, ask you what the theme is, and you would say, Abraham dies, Jacob and Esau are born. And then I would ask you to doodle the clue. Jacob and Esau uh, are born, and Abraham dies. And you would have to put the two, you know, you, you got that, right? Now, let me just say this before I get too far into because I can't remember if I, I did this in the ponder of passage part or not. So if I do, then we'll repeat it then again. But you notice how I'm saying that. Jacob and Esau are born. Jacob actually gets born first. So I probably should say Esau and Jacob, but I'm not going to say it that way because Jacob is the main character. Esau is going to give up something in this chapter that's huge. And because of that, it makes him number two, even though he's born number one. Hang in, you'll get that. <laughs> All right, let's be silly for a moment. Silly Bill, here we come. Why should you never trust a pig with a secret? I have to be honest with you folks, and I don't mean to be crude, and I don't mean to be mean, but I've never told a secret to a pig, ever. <laughs> so, I don't know that this joke even applies to me. However, you may have whispered in the, in the ear of your pig, and therefore we need to tell it. We need to bring it to its fruition, we need to go ahead and tell it all the way out here, so let's go ahead. Why should you never trust a pig with a secret? Because they are bound to squeal. Watch it. Pig comes through. Did you see the pig? Did you see it? Do we need to do it again? All right, I'll go back. Are you ready? The reason you don't trust a pig with a secret is because they're bound to squeal. Watch it. Pig coming here. Whoop, 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 whoop. There. <laughs> oink, oink. 
That didn't sound like a pig, that last part. Oink, oink, maybe. But anyhow, they're bound to squeal. <laughs> Get it? Squeal on? I thought that was actually pretty good. And the pig bouncing across the screen, that made the joke, right? You said to yourself, Sonny's brilliant. Is that what you said to yourself? I thought you did. All right, moving on. Segment number two. <laughs> make a memory. So stick something in the old gourd up here and make it stick in the gourd because you stuck it there. You see what I'm saying? That's we're going to make a memory. All right, so here's what we're going to memory. Uh, we're going to memory verse 27 of chapter 25. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter. He was a man of the field. Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in tents. That's your memory verse. Let me step over here. And so you'll be able to do that. So you say it five times. When the boys grew up, 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 when the boys grew up. And now you got that stuck in your gourd. It's right up there. It's stuck. And so you're able to remember it, right? And then you add the next phrase. Now, if that doesn't help, blank out some key words, as you know the drill, and there you go. See what I'm saying? Don't be a Sarah. Oh, I don't know if I can do it, Abraham. You can. I know you can. There you go. Blank out some key words, put it all over the house. Every time you pass it, you got to say it, and I think you got this. Moving on. Here we go. Woo, woo. All right. If I were to test you, I'd get my big head out of the way because you couldn't see the test. But I would say in test preparation for segment number two, Esau was skillful at what? It was in your memory verse. Were you paying attention? Esau was skillful at what? And then, quote, can you quote the memory verse? Can you quote the the memory verse, the memory verse, the memory verse. Can you quote the memory verse? Oh, de long. Let's be silly again. Love these two ladies. What do cows use to organize the herd? Now, I have seen some pretty disorganized herds. Here in Northeast Arkansas, we don't just have a plethora of cows. Plethora, I love that word. That means a whole bunch. Uh, but we do have cows every once in a while. Mainly we got beans and rice and stuff like that. But every once in a while you'll see some cows. And I have noticed that some of the farmers here in northeast Arkansas, their cows are not very organized. You'll have a cow over there, you have a cow over here, and then some cows in between, and they're just not organized. What would you do if you wanted to organize your cows? What do cows use to organize the herd? Clearly, you would need a cattle log. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. A log of the cattle. You know what I'm saying? And that way the head bull, he could go to the cattle log and he could say, Okay, Sarah, you're supposed to be over here. Martha, what are you doing? Over here, Martha. Hey, little Johnny. Right here. See, and he could organize the cows. <laughs> A cattle log. you got to admit, that wasn't half bad. And these ladies, they make it even funnier because they look like they're really laughing at me. They probably are, actually. Okay, moving on. All right, segment number three. That would be Trace. Upon the passage, me and my little buddy here in his funny little hat, doing his funny little fishing thing, he said, hmm, because he's pondering. See, he's sitting at the pond, and he's pondering. And so what we're going to ponder upon is what we've been talking about so far, and that is we are into chapter 25, and here is part of chapter 25 that I want us to ponder upon. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter. You're saying to yourself, Sonny, I've heard that before. That's because your memory burst. He was a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in the tents. Isaac, that's the dad, right? I guess I should have said, we, this needs to transition now, because Abraham's going to die in this chapter. So, Abraham, you're gone. You're Isaac now. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. So, he loved, evidently, having wild game brought in, and, and he loved to eat them. And so, that Isaac really favored Esau. Rebecca, that's the mama, she loved Jacob. And he sticks around the tent, and he learns to cook and all that kind of stuff. And so he's kind of a mama's boy. And she really likes Jacob. And so that favoritism within the family doesn't help. You're going to see that play out later in the story. Once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was exhausted. So maybe he was on a hunting trip, or he'd been working out there as a farmer. I don't know what, but he's, he's whoop tired. All right, And he comes in, and he's exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew, for I'm exhausted. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Edom, I'm told, is a word that in the Hebrew that sounds a lot like the, the Hebrew word for red. All right. And so I guess he, uh, Esau kind of got a nickname, Edom. The Edomites. Okay, later on you hear about the Edomites. Okay, well, let, but Esau, he says, hey, can I have some of your red 
eat them. Red stew, for I'm exhausted. Now, if your big brother came in, they're actually kind of twins, aren't they? Because, you know, they're born basically at the same time. But if your brother comes in and he says, hey, I am I am so hungry, I've been out there working. Can I have some of your soup? What would you say? Why, sure, I appreciate you for working so hard. Here's some soup. Not Jacob. Jacob says, well, listen, if you want some of my red stew, sell me your birthright now. Now, I don't want to go into a lot of detail with regards to what birthright is except to say that it means that you are the prominent child. Generally, the birthright goes to the firstborn. And that means that the firstborn would be looked to as the, the leader of the family once the patriarch, the father, passes away. He'd be the leader. And he's going to take over most of the property, all of those kind of things. Okay, So be, he'd be looked to as the leader of the family. In this case, Esau has that birthright because he's the firstborn. But he's so hungry, he makes a really foolish mistake. And he says to his little brother, he said, look, I, what, what good is my birthright to me? I'm starving to death over here. And so there's two things that went wrong here in this passage. Number one, it was not nice of Jacob to do that to his brother. Number two, it was really not good of Esau to not treasure his birthright, to give it up for a bowl of stew. Really? He says, sell me your birthright now. Esau said, I'm about to die. What use is my birthright to me? So Jacob said, swear to me now. So he swore to him and he sold his birthright to Jacob. And so he said, okay, I don't even care. You know, I, I'd rather spend my time out in the woods anyhow. I don't really care. You can be the the, the, the main brother, the, the main leader in the home uh, other than dad. That, go ahead, Jacob, it's yours. Gave up a lot that day. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and he drank, and he rose and he went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright, probably because it always now comes back to haunt him. I'm no longer the, the, the main man in the family. But also probably because he never really treasured it in the first place. He didn't evidently think of it as being all that important. He must have thought of himself as being a very independent man who didn't really need all this stuff, that you know, family, etc., and so... He didn't really care. And because of that, guess what's going to happen with regards to the lineage of Jesus? Jesus is going to come through Jacob, not Esau. He just didn't realize how much he was given up at that time. When God gives you an advantage, don't let go of it. All right. So what we're going to see in test preparation here in segment number three are these five questions. Go ahead and screenshot that, then you'll have them. What color does the name Edom indicate? It's my favorite color, by the way, just so you know. So if you need to send presents or anything, you can make sure that they're that color. Do you know what color it is? Go ahead and say it right out loud. You don't know? You're going to have to read back and find out. It's red. Red. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, there's your questions. You got them? All right, moving on. I love this next guy. His face just cracks me up. What kind of haircut do bees get? I gotta be honest with you, I've been around a few bees in my life and I'm not sure how you'd even cut their hair. I guess you'd have to get a little tweezer or something and maybe hold them and then, can you imagine the size of scissors to cut a hair off a bee's head? <laughs> this is getting kind of silly. Well, I guess that's the purpose of our joke time, isn't it? What kind of haircut do bees get? Well, pretty obvious they get a buzz cut. <laughs> <laughs> There's my buzzy bee. Did you see my bee? Did you see him come across there? He just hung around for us right there. I made him when I made him. I made him hit up against him and then come back so that he would buzz cut. Bzzz. That's the kind of haircut. They, it just cut it all off. <laughs> I guess if you're going to cut a bee, a bee, a bee, if you're going to cut a bee's hair, it'd be better just to shave it off rather than try to cut every, because, I mean, that's really small. <laughs> All right, segment number four, 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 look at you, four, boing, 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 apply the why. And so this is the part of our time together we I say to ourselves, selves, why do we even study chapter 25? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Actually, I asked you to ask me, and we all asked each other together, but it's been asked. And so let's go ahead and answer. Here's why we study chapter 25. Apply the why. I thought it was interesting, these two areas here, these two phrases or whatever sentences, uh, Sell me your birthright now, 
Esau despised his birthright. Did you ever make a, a quick decision that wasn't very smart? And maybe something, you know, that, you know, you gave your brother or your sister something, you know. Yeah, because in the moment you really didn't care. But later you got to see how much they were able to put that thing to use. You know, and you're like, oh, man, I wish I'd never done that. Have you ever done something like that? Just weren't thinking about it. Did you ever regret it later? I've done that. I just wouldn't, I, I just didn't care at the moment, you know, and I just kind of, and then I saw what they were able to do. And I thought, ah, if I had just not given that away. Why was Esau's decision extra hurtful to God? You know, we always talk about this passage and how Esau now, he's going to <coughs> despise his birthright. So it was obviously hurtful to him. He made a really bad decision, and so it hurts him. But why would it be hurtful to God? You ever think about that? I mean, God gives us all kinds of advantages, and then we up and give it away for a bowl of soup. I think God was hurt. And we're going to ask you to explain that. Well, I'm going to click it now. Here I go. You're watching me click it? Here, what? Clicked. I clicked it. Here's your question for segment number four. Why was Esau's decision hurtful to God? I just need you to show me a, uh, give me a short answer. See, I said it right here. Short answer as to why you think God was upset at the way Esau handled this advantage. Think about the advantage he has. Esau is like the head of the family next to his, after his dad passed away. He's like the man. He's going to get it all, and he's, he's in control and all those kind of things. But the one thing he didn't think of, maybe more than anything else, is the advantage his daddy has. Remember, his daddy is the son of Abraham. Abraham's like a major guy. And so what the son gets, you got Abraham, Isaac, and then it could have been Esau. But Esau didn't care. And God read that in his heart. He understood that in his heart. And so God understood from the beginning that it was going to be Jacob, not Esau, that was actually going to be the man through whom the Messiah was going to come. But imagine, we could be talking, instead of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it could be Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But it's not, because Esau didn't care enough about his birthright to hold on to it, to treasure the advantage that God had given to him. All right. Oh, there goes the blinds. There's my furball friend. What do you call a man with a shovel? It wasn't too uh, awful many weeks ago. My mom and dad, who live in a little cabin here just across the way, they needed water to come to their cabin, and I dug a ditch. I think I measured it like 60 foot. And I dug it by hand, and it hurt. And I got whooped, decayed, and tired. <laughs> but... Uh, I know what it's like to hold a shovel. Perhaps you know what it's like to hold a shovel. But what do you call the man who's holding the shovel? That's the question. What do you call a man with a shovel? Well, I'd call him Doug. <laughs> I get it? Because he he dug the hole. So you, you if he's holding the shovel, you call him Doug. <laughs> good. Yes, it was. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> Doug. Just call him Doug. All right. Guys, segment number five. Do you know what that means? There's my horse, buddy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, he says to himself. We really got to get him a toothbrush, so that, that kind of bothers me. But other than that, I really like him. Well, maybe in glasses. But other than that, I love my horse, buddy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It's time to test. <laughs> How many of you say that? Not me. I hated tests when I was in school. But that's what, But you don't have to hate them. You know why? Because you're so outstandingly bright. You're so smart, and I believe in you. Time to test. Here they are. Now I'm going to get my big head out the way so you can see it. You ready? I'm going to go. No, go that way, son. Okay, there I am. I'm over here. See, I'll get down here like this. I'll turn my head back. See, you got two of us. See this one? It doesn't matter. There's your questions. We're at a test 22, folks. 22. Halfway through the book of Genesis, but we're only into chapter 22. And there's, did I tell you? That's your, oh, yeah. <laughs> Test questions. You got them? Really been good. I enjoyed being with you today. I hope you learned a lot. Chapter 25, what's the clue? What Can you doodle it? Can you give me the theme? Chapter 25, Abraham dies and who's born? Come on, come on, come on. There's your questions. God bless you. Sonny Chow saying be there, Matthew 16, 26.